Welcome back. Let's talk a little SSH setup. In this sub lesson, we'll describe what SSH is and why we use it. We'll discuss the various SSH tools that are available to you. We'll demonstrate how to connect to typical virtual machines using a Windows client and also using a Linux client. And we'll demonstrate how to connect to VirtualBox based virtual machines, which is a little different. It's gonna require that port forwarding that we talked about previously, and I'll go through that again. So SSH, what is it? SSH is the secure shell. It allows us to do remote administration of systems. So if you have a computer here and you wanna control this one, you can do it with SSH, remote control. Generally, it's used in the command line, but there's also GUI-based packages that run SSH. But once you get in, you're still gonna be working in the command line. So it's a command line program that allows us to remotely control other systems or virtual machines. And I'm gonna use this to connect to our virtual machines. For example, we have a PC here at this IP address, and I wanna to connect to this virtual machine at this IP address, 10.0.2.4. So let's do it. Let's bring up a terminal, and I'm just at my main workstation here. So I'm gonna do an SSH, and we need to know the user account that we're gonna connect as. In this case, it's user at, and the IP address of the system we want to connect to. 10.0.2.4. Press enter. And the first time you connect, it says, hey, the authenticity of the host 10.0.2.4 can't be established. Oh, well, we have to agree to using this fingerprint and it's a SHA-256 fingerprint, so it should be relatively secure. Are you sure you wanna connect? Yes. First time you connect to a new host, you're gonna get this message. So we say yes, and it warns you, this host has been added to your list of known hosts, which is a file in the uh, user's home directory. But we need to type in the remote computer's user account password to get in. So I'm gonna do that now, and that's just the user password that we've been using for all of our installations. Press enter, and we're in. Now I'm in this computer as this user. The name is user at DHCP1. And if I take a look at that guy, I'll see that's his IP address and so on and so on and so on. As long as that system's running and as long as that system has an SSH server running, we should be able to connect to it. So that's how we would do it from the terminal in Linux. Let's also show this in Windows. So here's a Windows client. I'm gonna bring up, well, first of all, you could do this in the command prompt. You can use PowerShell. You can use terminal if you want for Windows, but I'm gonna bring up the PowerShell as an administrator. Okay, and I'm gonna to connect to a different system that I have running, because this is actually a separate system that's on the LAN that I'm connected to right now that I'm remotely controlling with no machine, by the way. I wanna connect from this system out to a server that I have running that's also on the LAN. So I'm gonna do that with SSH. Once again, it's gonna be user account at, and this is the IP. That's not of much consequence, but that's the IP address of the server on my LAN. We'll press enter. It asks for the password and we're in. So this is a test system where I run Kia DHCP and again, just a user account. And now we can do everything that we would normally do in the command line on a Linux system. And this is just doing it from a Windows computer. So SSH works essentially the same way, regardless of the platform that you're running on. It's just the program that you use to work with it. Again, in Windows, could be Command Prompt, PowerShell, Terminal for Windows, or if you're on Linux, you just use terminal, or on Mac, you'd use terminal. That's generally how I would do it. When you're done with a session like this one, we can just type exit, and that'll log out 
of that SSH connection. There is so much more to SSH. This is just scratching the surface, but it's all you need to do to take remote control of that system. Now, what we just did was a direct connection to a virtual machine. Uh, one of them I had running in KVM. The other was running in a VMware network. But if you want to do it with VirtualBox, it's a little different. We can't just connect directly. We have to set up either routing or we have to set up port forwarding. So it gets a little more complicated. And so if you're running VirtualBox on this host here and you have a virtual machine here with this IP, then we'd have to do port forwarding. And generally I wouldn't use the actual IP of the system. I'd use the local loopback IP 127.0.0.1 and a port of my choice 2222. And we showed this when we set up port forwarding in VirtualBox. That would then redirect to this IP on the inbound SSH port number 22. So let's demonstrate that now. I'm going to show port forwarding again and then connect. Okay, so let's bring up the uh, terminal again. And I'm on a Linux system here, and I'm running VirtualBox on this. And to run it, you can just type VirtualBox. Boom. And so now I need to configure port forwarding, bring up the virtual machine, and then connect to the virtual machine from another terminal. So we're going to go to File. Preferences, go to Network, and select our NAT network. We've already done this, so this is Review. We'll double-click on this, and then we'll go down to Port Forwarding. All right, and I already have a rule in here. I'm going to remove that rule, and we'll start over, make that a little bit bigger, and we'll create a new rule, call this SSH. I'll call it SSH to 10.0.2.4. We have to use TCP for this type of connection. It is connection oriented. It has to be guaranteed transmission of packets. So TCP as the protocol. The host IP that we're going to be using is going to be the local loopback address of whatever system it is that you're at. It's the hosting system. So instead of using the actual IP of the hosting system, we're using the local loopback 127.0.0.1. Port is your choice. You just have to remember what it is and use it when you connect from the command line. I like using 2222. The guest IP that I want to connect to, I want to connect to DHCP1, which is 10.0.2.4. And by default, the inbound port for SSH is 22. That's it. Click OK. OK for NAT network details. OK for VirtualBox preferences. And we're back in the manager. Now I can boot up my DHCP1. And there we go. Now you could log in here at the console. But again, if you're doing this kind of work, you might not have access to the console. Let's say this is a physical server, or let's say it's a virtual machine that's far away. You might not have access to this console and you'd have to SSH in. In addition, look at the look of this. We could change the resolution and we could change the font within the console, but it just doesn't have that look of your command line that you're used to, whether you're using PowerShell or whether you're using Terminal or whatever. In addition, we can't cut and paste any information into this command line, whereas you can if you're working in your regular command line, right? So I'm going to log out of here. I'm going to leave it open, though. And now I'm going to open another terminal on my system. Okay, open up another terminal, and I want to connect to that virtual machine. So I'm going to do an SSH. And this doesn't matter if you're using Windows open up Command Prompt or PowerShell. If you're in Mac or Linux, use Terminal. So we're gonna do an SSH user at, but now we put in that local loopback so we can do the port forwarding. So it's 127.0.0.1 space dash P, and that parameter specifies what port we wanna connect with and connect out with, which was 2222. 
and that's it. When we do that, that'll redirect. So that's going to redirect everything for us. This IP will be forwarded out to 10.0.2.4. And this port will be forwarded out to port 22 on that system. So let's press enter. And the first time we connect, we have to agree to the SHA-256 key fingerprint. We'll say yes, enter, type in the password of the user account, and we're in user at DHCP1. So this is how you would do it for VirtualBox. If you're using VMware Workstation or KVM or anything like that, you don't have to do this. You do it the other way that I showed the standard typical way. But for VirtualBox users, this is the workaround to get past that. You do port forwarding and connect in that manner. And now we have full access to the system. Well, not full access, because we're logged in as user. We want full access, we'd have to do a su space dash and type in the password of the root account. Now we have full access. And we can do whatever we want. and look at all kinds of good stuff that's in here, whatever you want to work with, whether it's SE Linux or uh, the networks directory or whatever, password or shadow, right? We can do it because now we have root access. Now in the field, would I do this? Would I use it as root access? No, I would use some other administrative account and leave the root account just as a backup in case we have to use it for some reason. But for training purposes, this is faster. It's fine to use root. This is just for testing and training. All right, when you're done, exit out. That's gonna ex exit me out of root and then we can exit out of the SSH session. And we're back into our regular login for this local system. So that's a little bit of how SSH works. Now, most operating systems have built-in SSH capabilities in the command line, and that's done with OpenSSH. But there's also graphical tools that you can use, like PuTTY and Kitty, looks, which looks very much like PuTTY. And these allow you to uh, modify the appearance of how your terminal will work and save sessions and have saved sessions to various different systems. So this type of thing might help you. Here's Solar Putty. But in the end, I almost always just use the OpenSSH client that's built into Linux or Windows. And I just have a lot of IPs and ports memorized. That's basically it. But feel free to use one of these tools. And there's lots of other third-party tools out there as well. Now, you need to make sure that one, the system you wanna to connect to has an SSH server running. And two, on your local system, you need an SSH client. So you wanna be able to check that stuff. Uh, so let's check that on Windows and also in Linux. Let's go back to our Windows client. First of all, if you wanna check for OpenSSH, we can go to settings. You get 100 Dave Prowse credits if you can tell me what baseball stadium that was. But anyways, we're gonna go into settings in Windows, then we'll go to apps. Then we'll go to, uh, I believe, optional features. Right. And you'll see if it's installed here. If it's not, then you could add the feature. Click on add the feature and it should be listed. And here you go, open SSH server. So we could serve SSH and have other people connect remotely to the system and open SSH client. So we could connect out to other remote systems and take control of those. Now you may say, um, well, Dave, why? It, how were you able to SSH before in the PowerShell if these are not selected? Well, that's because there's another way to uh, work with SSH. When you do it this way in Windows, you might not get the latest version. If you want a newer version, which you might need for a variety of purposes, then I recommend installing Chocolatey. 
now you have to be careful with this. You have to make sure you have uh, rights to do so and you have permission to use the system because you'll have to do a, uh, you'll have to actually work with the get execution policy in PowerShell. And then you can install Chocolatey and all the uh, notes for how to do that are here at chocolatey.org slash install. Once you've done that, you can then do a Choco install open SSH. And this will give you a newer version. When we press enter for this, you'll see that it is actually already installed. I got version 8.0.0.1. So we're at version eight here. And if you're trying to get a new version, you can just do a Choco uh, upgrade, open SSH. Okay, but it says here 8.0.0.1 is the latest version available based on your source. Okay, but you could upgrade that if you needed to. So SSH does work here. And you saw that I did SSH directly into another system. So that's another way to do that if you want to get the latest one. But otherwise, just go to the Windows settings and go to Apps Optional Features and just select it here. You can also find out the version by typing in SSH capital V and it'll tell you what version you're running, 8.0, with Libra SSL 2.6.5. We can do that in uh, Linux as well, SSH dash capital V. And you can see I'm actually running a little bit of an older version, which I plan to update uh, at 7.9 of OpenSSH. And like I say, OpenSSH is everywhere, so definitely get in the habit of using it. Now on the Linux side, if you have a server and you can't SSH into that server, well, maybe the service is not running. So to find out, you can do a system CTL status SSHD, SSHD. Press enter to see. Well, here we see it is active on this particular system. It is running. So other systems can connect to this system that I'm sitting at because the SSH server is working. And if you don't have it at all, you can install it. So let's say you need a client to connect out to the servers we'll be working with. You could install it with an apt install open SSH client. And that'll get you the open SSH client just in the case that you don't have it. This is from a Linux system. If you don't have the server running, you could do at apt install open SSH server. So various ways to get the server side and the client side, but what you're gonna be more interested in is one, you want the server side to be running on your DHCP server, your DNS server, and your uh, directory services server. And you wanna have a client on whatever workstation you're working at, whether it's Linux or uh, on Windows. Okay, so that's a little bit of SSH, and I hope you learned something. That's gonna round out this lesson. And I want you to use SSH to connect to the servers, to take remote control of those, get in the habit of using SSH. I'm gonna be working with that as we go through the course. And I'm actually gonna be moving off of VirtualBox. I've been using VirtualBox a lot, but I'm actually gonna be moving off of that. And I'm gonna start working in KVM with all the virtual machines. Look at all the virtual machines you see here. And these are gonna, the virtual machines are gonna be connecting to. If you are working with Linux a lot, you should check out KVM. I use it extensively because it is efficient and fast production grade stuff. It works on Linux, it's open source, it's free, and it just works awesome. So uh, that is one of the tools I use for virtualization. I'm gonna be moving over to that, but it's gonna be pretty transparent to you because I'm just gonna be SSHing in to these servers. And so you won't really see much of the virtualization platform anymore. But feel free to continue using VirtualBox or whatever platform you want. Just make sure that you're utilizing SSH to get into those servers. So great job so far, everyone. And we'll see you at the next video.